Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here. Welcome to the channel. Every time I decided to jump into a Ren video or a Chinchilla video, it's always met with a level of apprehension because every single thing I've witnessed from Ren and Chinchilla, to be honest, has been, you know, it, it's always sort of, you know, met and exceeded my expectations. And at some point, <laughs> there has to be something that comes along that doesn't, right? Like that, that makes sense, right? And so I, I, I'm always a little bit concerned that I'm going to run across something that I just don't vibe with or I don't connect with or something because everything else so far has been absolutely stunning. And I mean, you, all you guys watching this, you know, right? I'm over there on the Discord. I'm reading the comments under, you know, Ren and Chinchilla's Discords and, you know, and I see the passion that people have that matches my own as well. In fact, it far exceeds my passion. And it just, I just don't know, I don't know where the buck is going to stop, so to speak. And so I always feel a little bit weirded out. The only solace I take in this one is that this has been so highly recommended. And I've seen people, even in other reactors, comment sections, telling them you need to check out this because if you loved, say, chalk outlines or whatever. For those who haven't, aren't familiar with my channel, I started with High Ren, uh, the story of Jenny and Screech, chalk outlines live. Uh, then I did Animal flow from Ren. And I also, I've done a couple of chinchilla videos as well. And so now I'm like at this crossroads where I'm like, when is the good content gonna run out? And I'm gonna have to sit here and pretend like, you know, I'm not disappointed, right? And I just don't know that that's ever gonna come, but it's just always a feeling of apprehension that I struggle with. I have a lot of faith in this one because again, everybody seems to really talk it up in the chat. So I'm gonna jump right in and I hope I don't bore my eyes out like I always seem to do whenever it comes to Ren's storytelling, right? We'll see. But before I jump in, I just want to say this video today is brought to you in part by Enchroma. Enchroma make glasses for colorblind people like myself. If you or anyone you know is colorblind, just click the link in my description. It'll take you to their website. You can get a free eye test and find out if you have a deficiency and if so, what kind. And you might be able to pick up a, a new pair of glasses there that will help you see the world much more like everyone else does. I've had mine for a couple of years now. I'm, I'm a really big fan of their product and it really did reshape the way I look at color, especially as someone who paints and draws and things like that. It's been really fundamental in my development, understanding color better, you know, and understanding what my deficiency is as well. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. Here we go, Ren and Chinchilla, how to be me live. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh. Sorry to stop it so early in the piece, but first of all, I can't stop looking at Chinchilla, right? The, her, the way that in the, in that first sort of harmonic part, uh, the way that her voice bottoms out to breath. Oh, that's so nice. And then here, when their voices harmonize with each other, to me, it evokes the sound of like a, 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 a I guess like a, uh, what would it be? You know, like, like a recorder, right? Like one of the larger recorders. Uh, when you hear like the, you know, this classic California style songs, I'm trying to think mamas and the papas did it or something. I can't remember, but there's this beautiful haunting sort of recorder sound that's deeper than, you know, your, your school recorder. But the way that their voices are kind of harmonizing and you just get this weird chorusing kind of beat, it sounds like wind blowing through a wind instrument. And it's, you'll hear what I mean when they, when they come in here. It's absolutely a beautiful sound that they're making themselves. I doubt it's intentional. It's just the way that their voices just magically work together. And, and again, you know, it's in no small part due to Chinchilla's 
amazing command of particularly the lower part of her voice here. It's really good. Voices in my head I've been talking to the dead And the fear baptized me My kingdom turned to dust And I watched all my riches rust Have I lost the Midas touch Or do sad eyes Blind me. Oh. Again, what's interesting about these guys singing together is they don't lose the original character of their voices. You know, a lot of times when people harmonize as like a vocal group, for example, the idea is to come together to make a specific sound of three or four voices together in harmony. And the sound of the overall sound of the voice voices together is is like supposed to sound a certain way and so people will sing in a style to harmonize more of a breathy voice which blends better or more of this or that but these two are both singing in their very natural prosody like that like the way that they're you know they're, they're still using their storyteller elements they're not simplifying it down to harmonize a nice chord like again, listen to Chinchilla and the way she enunciates. Have I lost the Midas touch? Touch is just her thing, you know. And again, she always sounds a lot of times at the end of her her phrasing. She always sounds a little bit out of breath, specific like specifically, you know, like not, not like um, intentionally, I should say. It's it, it just sort of gives her a really nice flavor to her melodies and stuff like that. And and Ren's doing the same thing. He's not trying to sing in a different style to blend with Chinchilla. They're, they're just working, they're just singing their own parts and they just sound magic together, you know? I'm going to go back a bit. I feel like I, I shouldn't be stopping this much. Voices in my head I've been talking to the dead And the fear baptized me My kingdom turned to dust And I watched all Doist. my riches rust Have I lost the Midas touch Or do sad eyes Blind me Over and over we go Over the hills and the valleys below Oh, and it follows me, follows me home And it suffocates me mm -hmm. Oh, I can't breathe I said, oh I can't breathe all I know is I forgot how to be me. Saviors die too soon 
for my sins Surround me Over and over we go Over the hills and the valleys below Always be follows me Follows me Follows me Follows me Suffocates me Every goddamn time. <sighs> wow. I think the only thing I really have to say is how are these two not performing this at the Grammys? You know? I mean, I know that they're both of their careers are blowing up in real time, like right now. And it's all based on word of mouth and it's based on the passion that you guys have, the audience has, for driving these two forward. Ren particularly, but also, I mean, Chinchilla's having unprecedented success also. Uh, and I think that's the nature of, of and, and, and again, I don't take anything away from Chinchilla. She's incredibly talented and she should be blowing up. But I feel like that's one of the things about Ren is that he just seems to, people get caught up in his wake and he's, he the, and dragged up like, all, you know, all, all the a rising tide rises all ships or something, raises all ships. He's definitely the rising tide, right? But I mean, that was that was just a magical performance. You really genuinely feel like you you witnessed a moment when you watch this. And uh, you know, the just the vision, you know, we've seen Ren do some pretty big, intense music videos with, you know, uh even Animal Flow, right? There was so many moving parts in that. But then you know, and and then the choreography of of something like Jenny and Screech, where he's moving around through a lot of locations and things, but the boldness to take this and just run a close camera over the two as they're singing, no wide shots, no cutaways. The city is the backdrop, and it does its job, but having like just this this really personal moment, and it is personal. I mean, I, I'm gonna have to look at the lyrics. To really understand what's going on, but I'm a, I suspect that Ren's talking about a friend who who lost the battle with depression, I suppose, right? Uh, and 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 how and how it may have affected him as well. But all that aside, it doesn't it doesn't even. I mean, it matters, right? The lyrics always matter. There's there's definitely depth and heart to the poetry. But without even really understanding that, the vibe is enough, right? Not having all the details i'm sure you guys are familiar in, in the comments about you know what it's about and think oh my god what it's about or whatever uh but i mean to me the vibe is everything it, i just the way that these two stare into each other's eyes the whole time and they just have this moment together the the braveness to do that i mean i don't know i think ren's just that kind of character where he's just super engaging but Anybody who's ever stared into somebody's eyes for more than just a few seconds knows that it's an uncomfortable position to be in, particularly when you're sharing such a, a deep emotional experience. And these two rarely stop 
gazing into each other's eyes and just feeling each other as if there's like a an electrical electrical network connection between them that's allowing them both to exist in this moment at the same time and produce such a cogent piece of art together at the same time. It's it feels like they I mean I don't know what they did, but it feels like the first take. It feels like they just walked out there grabbed their microphone, said, all right, we're doing this, let's do it. And they just they just made it work and made it happen. And there are multi-platinum artists out there working in the world right now, getting all the acclaim and all the praise that would never be able to achieve something like this. Not in a million years because there's industry types. There's people who work the system and work the industry. They know how to be popular and they know how to write music that will chart and you know they know how to employ the right producers to manufacture moments like this emotionally connective moments with an audience like this but there's very few people who are able to do it in the truest sense of the word like it with realness and passion and openness and uh, what's the word? Not authenticity, uh, earnestness, right? That's that's what this is. This is a 100% earnest shared experience, which is about the bravest thing you can do, I think. It's really interesting. Really interesting. I think I'm going to have to watch it three or four more times to really get to the bottom of it, <laughs> but I'm going to take a break and not do that <laughs> for a little while. Again, there's there's no way that like uh, what I said at the beginning about like I'm waiting for that that sort of Damocles to fall and make me sort of understand. Okay, so Ren is just another artist. He's just another performer. It's been all a big coincidence, <laughs> but it's just not happening. And I think that's the strongest indictment into the fact that we're looking at a true artist right now. You know, him and Chinchilla as well. They just get it. They understand their audience. They, they Actually, that's not true. They understand that the audience will find them if they're true and earnest enough and brave enough to speak their mind and to exist open f for everyone to, to witness. And that's that, that, that strikes me as being somebody who has nothing to lose and everything to gain as opposed to people who are like, oh man, if I just take one wrong step, I'll lose all of the ground that I've made. You know, I don't see that that's something that even crosses Ren's mind. I think he just likes to produce music that makes him feel something. And it just so happens that people connect with that. That's what it seems like to me. Anyway, that's about all I got to say. I, the, the song speaks for itself. I, there doesn't need to be a reaction to this. The reaction is you guys, you know, making it have how many views uh collectively just working together to blow these guys up so that maybe next year at the grammys they're performing this song you know man <laughs> if you feel like i've brought you today at all feel free to support the channel just buy me a coffee i'll leave a link in the description also uh like share follow subscribe all that sort of stuff but more importantly fill me in what what does this song mean to you has there been any word as to specifically what ren's talking about I, I mean, I, ca I caught at the end, you know, that, that moment with him just solo talking about like losing a friend, right? So I suspect it's, it's mostly about that. But is there anything else? Is, I was too engaged in looking at them perform to really sort of get to the bottom, bottom of the, the character of the song. And, you know, a lot of people say you should read the lyrics before you do the reaction. I don't know that I like to do that because it sets up a pretense about what I, what I expect is going to happen. And for me... You know, as somebody who's not really a poet, right, to me, th there's, there's a certain type of listener that really connects with the lyrics. I've talked about this before. My friend Michael knows the lyrics to every one of his favorite songs because he's so engaged with the storytelling and the lyricism that he'll actively seek it out and learn the, the lyrics, you know, just so that for, to, to get deeper into the song. And, you know, I do that to a certain degree. But for me personally, it's always more of a like a like an experiential sort of vibe that I get. Uh, a lot of times, I like to have my own connection to what it means to me, rather than to know exactly specifically what the artist is talking about. You know, that's as as somebody who likes the band Tool, like Maynard, as far as I'm aware, has never 
posted his lyrics anywhere and he's never tried to describe what they're about. It's always, he leaves them up to the, to the listener to come up with their own cockamamie plans about what the song's about. And I, I kind of fall into the boat of appreciating that. And, and I do like poetry and I love, you know, written poetry and all that sort of stuff. But for me, musically, it's more about what the music is saying, how it touches you, you know, because you can read words on a page and they can be engaging and, and, and creative and they can touch your soul. But for me, it just seems to work better if it's just the music telling the story and the passion in the voices and you catch the occasional hint of meaning. But because sometimes I feel like if you really drill down into it, you've connected with this song and you feel something and it makes you, it elicits a, a visualization in your mind and makes you sort of uh, have your own interpretation of what they're talking about. But then when you find out what the song's actually about, sometimes it can take a little bit of that sheen away. Uh, I, I suspect in this case, that's probably not the case. <laughs> and and I will go back and do another pass and really listen. But if you guys could fill me in, uh, that, that would be awesome. Because a lot of times with Ren, you miss a lot of things, particularly on the first listen, which is another reason I try not to capture every little nuance and detail because you just can't, you know. And so, and I, and I know that people in the chat love to sort of jump in and go, did you notice this? And did you notice that? And I read all those and I'm like, no, I did not. And that is amazing. So fill me in. That's that's the bottom line. I'm the new guy. Let me know. Okay. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate you sticking around this long. Stay primal. I'll catch you in the next one.